Thank you for taking time to learn more about becoming a CSA vegetable farmer through this educational video series. As we said in the introduction, we believe that helping beginning farmers fit their skills to their business is essential for sustainability and the future of farming. We hope working through these videos helps you find greater success, whether you choose CSA or another agricultural career. I know we've covered a lot of ground about annual vegetable production and CSA farming in the last two hours. In this final video, we will spend a little time summarizing the lessons learned throughout this series. Then we will look toward the future. We will help you evaluate whether or not CSA is a good next step for you right now and present some alternatives if you don't feel ready or interested in pursuing CSA. Lastly, we'll spend a little time sharing some tools and resources for those interested in moving forward with their CSA business. So what exactly did we learn over the past two hours together? Well, the main thing we hope you took away from this series is that there are 10 key attributes that most successful CSA farmers possess, nurture, or cultivate. These attributes are passion, production experience, organizational skills, administrative know-how, financial savvy, ability to market a business, communication skills, customer service experience, willingness to sacrifice, and an ability to manage stress through difficult seasons. We learned that each unique skill set adds a tremendous amount of value to the business as a whole, and that collectively these skills predict the overall viability of a CSA farm. We learned that the best and most successful CSA farmers possess these attributes or actively work to foster them. But we also learned that no one is perfect, and that the CSA farmers who recognized they didn't have the time, energy, or knowledge to put towards a particular element of CSA found ways to outsource or gain additional support from a partner or organization. We observed how many different farmers reached the same great results using varied strategies and techniques. We learned that every CSA farm is different, but that there are still common threads that unite us all. In other words, we hope you learned a lot. And we hope that all of this information gets you a little bit closer to understanding whether or not CSA is a good model for you. So, how do you know whether or not you're ready to move forward with starting a CSA business? Well, at the end of the day, only you can make that call. Like we asked you to do at the end of each module, the best way to know how to move forward is to honestly consider your response to the content. At the end of the series, do you feel excitement and eagerness to cultivate a broader skill set to improve your chances of business success? Or do you feel drained, overwhelmed, and unmotivated? These heavy feelings might be telling you that you aren't ready or that CSA is more than you want to take on right now. That being said, feeling some level of anxiety is a completely normal response to taking on a new opportunity or risk. And feeling overwhelmed doesn't necessarily mean CSA isn't the right fit. Watching this series probably helped you realize that CSA has a lot more moving parts than you originally thought. It's normal for this to cause some level of anxiety or overwhelm. The best way to work through this is to examine which facets of CSA concern you the most and determine whether or not you're willing to invest additional time and resources to develop the necessary skill sets. If you're still feeling blocked and struggling to get your head around starting a CSA business, the timing might not be quite right. That doesn't mean you're not capable. There may just be a few more steps to pursue on this journey before diving into beginning a CSA business. So what should you do if CSA doesn't feel right right now? How do you move forward? What other options exist for you? Over the next five minutes, we're gonna to talk to four different farmers, two of them who started their farm businesses before beginning their CSAs, and two farmers who decided to take another route, who ultimately decided that CSA wasn't going to work for them. If you're feeling certain you wanna move forward with your CSA business, feel free to skip ahead on the video to the section on tools and resources to move forward with CSA. Hi there, my name is Stacy Thompson, and I am with Our Fiddlehead Farm in North Carolina. And we are CSA farmers, but we took a longer approach to get here. We always wanted CSA to be the heart of our farm. And we started our farm 15 years ago with that in mind. We did not start our CSA until about in earnest two years ago. In 2012, we thought we were gonna launch the CSA, but instead we watched our family. And so we had to move the CSA further down the line because we didn't wanna jump into providing a service that we didn't feel comfortable we could adequately do or do to the best of our ability at that time. We were constant icons at the farmer's market. We had uh, set customers. We were very involved in our community and still are it evolved to where our customers at the farmer's market and through our restaurants were asking us if they could get a box of veggies every week. And we started with 10 families. And in starting that small 10 member CSA, we were very upfront with them and said, we want you to come alongside us in this. And they were willing to do that. 
So now we are 100% a CSA farm 10 years later. We have 75 members already signed up. We're completely sold out for this year. And um, we're continuing to build that relationship. And I'd like to encourage you that everybody's path to CSA can look different, but it doesn't mean that CSA isn't a viable option for your farm business. Hi, my name is Tommy, and I am one of the co-founders of Vitruvian Farms, an organic vegetable farm outside of Madison, Wisconsin. I started the farm along with my friend Sean in 2010, so we've been farming for just over 10 years now. We did not do CSA to begin with. We actually began with selling to restaurants. Um, the reason we did that was because we got into farming without any knowledge in farming whatsoever. We kind of felt like CSA was a bit intimidating. We really didn't know how to grow anything. So the, the idea of growing 20, 30 different varieties of crops um, was a bit overwhelming in the beginning. So we felt like that our skill set did not align to that. So we began with wholesale because that allowed us to really focus on one, two crops um, to begin with and do them, master them. And we did that for four years before we considered entering into the CSA realm. We got into it at that point because we felt like we knew what we were doing enough for a wide variety of crops. We've now run a CSA for, I believe this is our fifth, maybe even sixth year. We're shooting for about 100 full share equivalents per week. Hi, this is John Hendrickson, and I am an example of someone who was exceedingly passionate about community-supported agriculture from the very beginning. But when I started my farm, I opted to not start a CSA farm. We bought our farm in 1999 and started growing crops right away. But I knew at that time, based on my experiences, that I just did not have the wherewithal to grow 40, 50, 60 different vegetables. I just, I didn't have enough experience. And then I also, you know, knew firsthand about all the work in terms of the organizing and the relationships with customers. I just knew that I, I especially given that I was doing farming part-time, knew I wasn't going to be able to pull it off. For a while, I toyed with the idea of having CSA be a component of my farm. But as my farm started and grew, um, I had a really wonderful marketing option, which was Homegrown Wisconsin. And Homegrown Wisconsin was a farmer-owned marketing cooperative that sold to restaurants. And I found that to be a really uh, easy and profitable way to grow and sell vegetables. I would encourage anyone uh, who's passionate about this uh, to think carefully about whether it's really the right model, because there's lots of different ways to have a satisfying, profitable farm. Hello, my name is Jonathan Korea, and I am the uh, co-owner of Ballistic Harvest. Um, I also am the founder and owner of La Cosecha Tortilleria, and I am here to talk to you today about why I no longer do CSA. My partner Stephanie and I started our farm in 2016 as a way for us to both start pursuing our dreams in agriculture, and we thought a great way to start building a community around our farm was to start a CSA. It was really fun and exciting at first. There were just a lot of unforeseen challenges that we didn't realize that we were going to be taking on. So I think what ultimately led us to stop doing CSA is that we realized that it wasn't really <clears throat> in our heart. Um, it wasn't really what motivated us to get into agriculture. There were tasks that we, we were just not well suited for. You know, we love the community aspect of, of agriculture, but we just didn't have the bandwidth to, to give each customer the, the attention that they needed. When we decided to move on from our CSA, that actually gave us an opportunity to scale back the farm a little bit and reassess uh, where our place was in agriculture, develop a better relationship with the crops that we wanted to grow, which has allowed us to be more efficient with our time and, and our labor. I think the only thing I really want to reiterate to people is not to use CSA as just as a, a way to bring money onto your farm and to generate revenue. Um, you know, 
really know where your heart lies in, in agriculture and what motivates you. Um, and I feel like if you, if you wholeheartedly pursue those, those passions and those desires, that, that that's what's going to give you success in agriculture. For those of you ready and enthusiastic to begin a CSA, congratulations! This series has already offered many practical examples of successful CSA farms. Now you are likely wondering what are some additional tools and resources for you moving forward. Excellent national organizations include the CSA Innovation Network, a CSA-specific group, and the Rodale Institute, a research and education organization with regional resource centers. Here in the Midwest, we also have MOSES, the Midwest Organic and Sustainable Education Service, which offers an expansive array of events, programs, and publications relevant to organic farming in this area. Beyond that, local extension agencies can be really helpful. There is also an online course recently developed by me, Lauren Rudersdorf, and Corinna Bench of My Digital Farmer. We created CSA Quick Start in the spring of 2020 to help farmers learn step-by-step -step how to start their own CSA businesses. You can find it in the CSA Marketing Discussion Group on Facebook or by joining the My Digital Farmer email list. Lastly, we also encourage you to research CSA coalitions to see if there are any in your region. Here in Wisconsin, Fair Share CSA Coalition provides a bounty of incredible educational content and support to current and aspiring CSA farmers. Check out the CSA Innovation Network to see what coalitions or organizations may exist in your area. All of the resources mentioned here and many more are listed below in a resource document. It is crucial that aspiring CSA farmers recognize their role in the broader movement. It's not about being perfect or even exemplary at every aspect of CSA. All we ask as you begin your CSA farm is that you think about the expectations inherent in CSA and work hard to maintain a high standard to preserve the integrity of the CSA movement as a whole. The ultimate goal of this series is not just an increased number of sustainable farms, but also more thriving CSA farmers, more profitable market gardeners, and more farm entrepreneurs creating local food systems aligned with their unique skills and intentions. From all of this video's contributors, we wish each and every one of you the very best on your personal farming journey.